Well, let's throw in and expand further on that specific word, when, because Gary, you're saying he's had a, a, a little spell of making mistakes, De Gea, that mm. is. But for a lot of fans, it seems to, to go back to the World Cup where he let a Ronaldo shot creep in. And that yeah. was the whole of last season. And we saw quite a few errors. Even before the World Cup, there were a few creeping in. And this season as well. I mean, how long does a spell have to go on for before you really start questioning, can the club improve by having someone else in goal? Well, well there's, there's no doubt, in my opinion, that l unless you have a world-class goalkeeper who is on top of his game, you aren't going to win very much. It's as simple as that. Um, De Gea, in my opinion, has been a world-class keeper, arguably still is. However, he's not on top of his game at the moment, as he's proved today. It's, in my opinion, it's the hardest position to play on the pitch as far as if you make mistakes, and I'm talking about the goalkeeper here, because if you make a mistake in that position, invariably, it ends up in the back of your own net. You know, Danny was a defender, I was a defender. If I was ever able to bail out my goalkeeper from a position behind him, it was miraculous, to be honest with you. So, number one, you have to protect him by doing your job in front. So, go back to the goal he conceded. If Luke Shaw's header to try and retain possession is a better header, it doesn't happen. When Bergwijn gets the ball, if Harry Maguire and Lindelof defend better against Bergwijn, the shooting opportunity doesn't come along. Now it's the last opportunity to solve the problem. And I just felt that if I was a, a defender or any of those defenders, having made the mistakes we had made, I would be hoping that my goalkeeper can bail me out. If he saves that, I'm thinking he's made a great save. If he doesn't save it and De Gea doesn't, I'm thinking, I think my keeper's a bit disappointed there. Um, would I want to be a goalkeeper? No, absolutely not. Um, I don't think there's more I can say about it, but I do, I do believe that to write De Gea off at this stage, and I believe that Roy Keane has basically come out and said he has to go. Um, to, to state that at this moment in time, I think is unnecessary and inaccurate. Uh, yeah, I believe he also called him overrated, wouldn't let him back on the team bus, and uh, a few other words thrown in there for good measure as well. But when you also look at the fact that in terms of saves, amount of saves in a Premier League season, very rarely do you have a Manchester United goalkeeper on top, or any of the top six for that matter, simply because they don't face as many shots as a team who's in the bottom half of the table. So therefore, it should be worrying the frequency that we're talking about mistakes from De Gea, because he is facing fewer shots than a lot of other goalkeepers, just because he's playing yeah. for Manchester United. So how much of him are we going by reputation as opposed to performance on the pitch, Dan? Well, I, th I, think, I think the problem that United have had over recent seasons is that I think he's got player of the year twice for the club. And, more than you know, twice. For, <laughs> yeah, more than twice. And, and with all the goodwill in the world, you don't want your goalkeeper to, to be your player of the season. But the one thing I would say is that when you look at top goalkeepers, the reason they are top goalkeepers is because they can be redundant for, for so much of the match and then just have to switch on. Whereas sometimes when you have keepers near the bottom of the Premier League, they're always constantly, they have to be switched on, they have to be switched on. So at times it can actually be more difficult being at a top club because you don't have to face as much. So you expect it to go from zero to 100 in no time. Um, but I think that, hey, you know, he will know that this is a mistake. And I think what's happened what's happened is every mistake that's, that's made, and as Gary's quite rightly said, he has made a few mistakes in, you know, the last season or two. Everyone... Every time he makes a mistake, oh, what's going to happen with him now? Is he in the right frame of mind? You know, there was that talk of him going to Real Madrid. I don't think there... I, I still think that he's a top-class goalkeeper. Does it concern me that he's starting to make a few few more mistakes? Yes, it does, because I look at that, that save today, and like I say, I'm not a goalkeeper. If he had have saved that, it would have been a good save, but it wouldn't have been a world-class save, because then a few minutes later, you see the save that he makes to tip, to tip the header over the bar, quite similar to Larissa's. Yeah. So we know what he's capable of, but he does need, you know, the consistency. All right, final question on De Gea. How long should you be giving him 
to really maintain his position as number one at Manchester United, bearing in mind they have someone like Dean Henderson, who's out on loan at another club, who's performing miraculously throughout the course of the season and looks like the anointed successor. And you probably want to keep him at the club and happy, as opposed to maybe being forced to go out and buy another goalkeeper. And while we saw how much Allison costs and Kepa costs, and you probably want to avoid that given the current financial situation of a lot of clubs. Gary? Well, I don't think there's any rush to make that decision. Um, and this isn't sitting on the fence at all. But here I am sat in Thailand talking to you in Malaysia and Danny in the UK. Um, the people who are closest to the situation, the goalkeeper coach at Manchester United, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at Manchester United, the other coaching staff at Manchester United, they are the ones that really know where the situation is. Um, and, and I still suggest that over the remainder of this season, De Gea will make more saves, good saves, better saves than he makes mistakes. And Danny just brought that up a moment ago, didn't he? You know, what about the great tip over he makes from Son's header, for example? You know, that's all gone under the counter because arguably we all tend to prefer to talk about the negative aspect of a player's performance. Um, yes, I know it was a key aspect in the game, but there was also an awful lot of good stuff from De Gea. Dan, what about yourself? How long should uh, yeah. he be given to prove himself? I, I think I think what will happen, I don't think it's a case of improving himself. I think if you look at the situation with, with Dean Henderson, obviously he's on loan at Sheffield United. There's talk about the contract extension at Sheffield United as, as though it being, it's going to be a formality. There's been no noises that he's going to be called back from Manchester United. And I think Manchester United want to keep Dean Henderson sweet, you know, allowing him to stay on loan because they could be challenging Manchester United for European positions. I think, you know, trying to look into the future, I think what will happen, I think Dean Henderson probably goes out on loan again next season unless the hair is sold in this one, which I, sorry, in the transfer window, which I don't see. And then I think what, what we'll see happen is, is David De Gea, you know, he's, everybody knows that he would love to go back and play in Spain eventually. And I think the time will come where the crossover happens, where Dean Henderson is ready to become Manchester United's first choice goalkeeper. And Dave, David De Gea then pro probably moves back to Spain, which could suit everybody's in terms of quality of the goalkeepers, Dean Henderson having the experience and David De Gea being a wonderful servant to Manchester United, one of the greatest goalkeepers they've ever had, you know, eventually getting his move back to Spain. All right.